Welcome to episode 103 of Tim Talk, the podcast about the DC anime universe co-created by Bruce Tim. I'm Chris Lord. I'm Cameron Dexter. And we're back. We're back, baby. <laughs> Oh, oh, the holidays. It's, it's been, it, every time we miss a week, it feels like months go by. It really does. I mean, it's, I guess because it's really two weeks, basically, that we haven't yes. actually recorded. And yeah, it seems like it's such a long time off, mm-hmm. but it's really not. But we're, we're doing our best to have energy, even though it's Sunday night and we're both quite tired. Wait, we're, we got this. <laughs> this is our time. But we are here. We are We're back. talking Batman. Yes. Exciting times. You got some um, news for me? I do. Well, not Batman news. Uh, Who but, needs it? But, I mean, there's no Batman news anymore. It's like, I don't know. What we ben don't even a- know if we have a Batman anymore. I, who knows what Ben Affleck's up to? And we've seen Batman's dick. That was the only real Batman worthy news anytime recently. I mean, I th- we, we peaked. And I think that's the problem. That's true. Yeah. Where do we go from the here? The second we saw that dick. Yeah. Not Grayson. No. Mm, I think uh, that's that's about the only thing they can do at this point. Yeah. I mean, that dick dick. Hmm. Yeah, they gotta hold off on that for a while. Nah. They can't do it back to back. Bring it up. They gotta, they gotta, you know, work oh, up to it. God, that's true. I know teasing is nice sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just not Batman news, but it's real sad news if you watch Netflix's Daredevil, which none of us do anymore. But it got canceled. Oh yeah, it is our fault because we have not watched. We didn't season watch three. it. No, I haven't watched anything since the Defenders. Same. And I don't know if it was even that the Defenders was that bad. It was, it was fine, but I think. You and I both were fatigued by that universe going into the Defenders. Yeah, because I didn't finish Iron Fist. Okay, I did it. actually. Okay, I, I quit halfway through Iron Fist, and then Defenders was was just kind of meh. Yeah, it was okay. It it, it it was like they they built up to something for so long, and then when it doesn't live up to the hype, yeah, you lose a lot of motivation. And, and like I heard Punisher was was good. Yeah, same. I didn't really have any interest in it. No. Um, and then I heard Luke Cage season two was I think an improvement. Mm-hmm. And I've heard actually I think heard every th- season was better than its previous except Jessica Jones, I heard was just okay. Yeah. But I did hear Iron Fist season two was pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then it landed in like a big cliffhanger. And Daredevil season three is supposed to be like the best one so far. Yeah. So I do kind of want to watch it, but part of my problem is I don't have 13 hours. Yeah. I just don't. And I, I think that was maybe for a lot of people as well. Are like, this is good, but not great. I just don't know if it's worth have the time. Have you watched Castlevania yet? No. Okay. I recommend that one because it's super short and easy. Okay. I, and I've heard it's, it's really good. Yeah, I've heard it's, it's really, really good. For two seasons, it's only three hours total. Oh, my God. Thank Yeah. It, it's 20-minute episodes. Season one is four episodes. Season two is six episodes. Okay. I need that because... And it's great. It's such a nice, like, digestible... It's basically a movie. It's just okay. a nice digestible movie. Fantastic. Yeah. Because I, I basically only watched Golden Girls for the last week and a little bit of Man in the High Castle. Mm-hmm. God. Golden Girls. Keeps getting better. There you go. I'm also really excited. My mom got me a Golden Girls Clue. Oh, my God. Haven't played it yet, but I, I, I kind of looked at the box. I don't think it's, you know, if someone was murdered, I think it was who ate the last slice of cheesecake is the oh mystery that God. has to be oh solved. Oh, my God. That's so good. <laughs> so I'm really excited to play that. Um, what are the news we have? Um, well, I do want to talk one other thing about, like, the, the, oh, okay, the okay. Netflix Daredevil cancellation. I think part of the challenge is it's hard to know why it was canceled, right? I think it's... I'm. I think it's fair to assume that the Marvel streaming app has something to do with this. Yes, absolutely. And I don't know if it's, I, I don't know if they can then bring those properties over to that app though, because I'm sure Netflix has some sort of ownership on it. Mm-hmm. Um, well, at the same time, if, if we look at the other side of that coin, there was no advertising for season three. No, like no. Like whatsoever. I remember listening to, uh, Mrs. not Mr. Sunday movie. They're they're probably Weekly Planet. Weekly Planet yeah. And they brought up the same thing that I was dealing with, where like it wasn't even recommended for me. It yeah. wasn't featured. Like if I wanted to see it, I had to dig for it. Which you you can't do in Netflix anymore. No, you you really can't. It's so hard to search for anything. And I think like I, this is pure speculation. I have no knowledge into what actually went on here, but you kind of get the sense the Netflix was kind of like, fuck you. Yeah. They they're like, we don't they're the, I think they're trying to show that they will be fine without those right. series. Well, because because you think about it, it's not just those series, but it's like everything Disney that's on there now at a certain point will not be on there. Right. Like there's no way Disney's ever going to renew their licensing with Netflix for any of their properties. Why would they? Exactly. And that's got to be like a pretty decent 
chunk, if not necessarily of the amount of content on there, but I bet a lot. I mean, a lot of viewers it's, will just go and watch a Disney movie because they're on there. It's it's been. I I mean, obviously, I've been keeping track of that. Yes, of course. Uh, it's it's been slowly dwindling. Like yeah, I bet it, they're they're smart with because you know before Disney was pretty evenly spread across all of the streaming apps. Yeah. So uh, Amazon had a few movies. Hulu had a few movies and Netflix right. had a few. Mo- if basically, if you had all three services, you had pretty you had a, much you the had entire good catalog. Chunk. Yeah, and then if yeah. you really couldn't find something and were desperate, you can get it on iTunes. Right. So. Um, but then over the past year, um, their big hitters are slowly being taken off. Okay. So like all of the, pretty much all the Renaissance films are now gone. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's um, kind of the the two thousands movies are still there, so you can still see like. Treasure Planet, I think, is still mm-hmm. on Netflix. Uh, Atlantis is still there. Lilo and Stitch is still there. Oh. Emperor's New Groove is still there. So kind of I the, just watched that, that recently. Rewatched it's it. It's so good. It's really good. Yeah. Uh, that like that early two thousands era is still available. Okay. Um, and then there's a few DComs that are still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, as we continue for our as we continue this uh, quest towards the Disney streaming service, mm-hmm. we're gonna see, you know you know one or two is going to be taken off each month right and what will be interesting to see is what they keep up on hulu because disney now has a huge stake in hulu it's as like a result of buying 40 or something yeah i mean it's it's not majority but they have the single largest mm-hmm. stake in it now and so there's no way they're going to kill it right so and I, there was even something recently about uh, bob Iger mentioning that they're planning on doing like a big investment in hulu um but it, it may be a little bit more on the, the Fox side of things and like the sprinkling of some Disney stuff in there. I don't know. Um, but w- what I don't know is with these characters, like I don't know if we're going to get these same iterations again. Cause I just I don't know if you can transfer that over to a different – I don't know how all the licensing and how the deals and stuff works on this. But I don't know if we're going to necessarily see like Charlie Cox be coming back as Daredevil. Right. And maybe for them, they, they see that as a semi kind of failed experiment. Part of the problem, though, being like – canonically these are the versions of those characters that exist in the mcu right so and and what do you do at at this point you can't pull the same multiverse shit that dc can do no i i I mean we know like there's all this talk about the quantum realms can be really big when it comes to um the next avengers movie avengers 4 Mm -hmm. i don't know if that's necessarily gonna be like full-on multiverse though Right. I, I, I mean, can... it, it like there are so many possibilities with kind of the Infinity Stone question of like, where did everyone go when they snapped? Yeah, we all we know we know they're not dead. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like they can all they can open up that possibility there of like he didn't kill half; he split the universe in two. Oh, that could um, be interesting. Or, yeah, and so then you can then you can have another version of these characters oh, over here. You can have cool. kind of. You know, you can do the the weirder story. Honestly, they can put all the Fox bullshit over there <laughs> and then trickle it in through kind of the, the combined. You know, they can do a, an infinite crisis storyline. Yeah. Where it's the can. two it, where it's, you know, because uh, infinite crisis is where Lois of Earth two dies. So Superman of Earth two comes to Earth one to take their Lois, <laughs> which is a great story. <laughs> of course he does. Mm hmm. And causes Superman cannot deal with grief. No, like consistently, anytime Superman becomes a total dick bag, it's because Lois has died. Yeah, and he just can't deal with that shit. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, even like in Kingdom Come, that's a part of it too. Yeah, and yeah. Ob- and obviously injustice is injustice. That's like the big one. Mm-hmm. That I mean, you've never played the games, right? I love the game. I haven't read the comics. I love the game. Oh, so you play the games? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because I haven't played the games, but I have read the comics. Oh yeah, I was an Aquaman spammer. I'm sorry, what now? Uh, so uh, the two most annoying characters in the first Injustice were Superman and Aquaman. Why? Because they made Aquaman unnecessarily overpowered, where he could, his uh, his basically his, his bread and butter move was uh, he would, I don't remember the button combination anymore, but he would wave his arm across the screen and a trident would come up from the bottom of the, from underneath your opponent. Yeah. Uh, but basically it always hit. Oh, okay. So, like, you could jump and it would still hit you. And so you could, om- like, that's how you always started your combos off. Yeah. And it was almost impossible to dodge. <laughs> and I, like, my friends got so mad because that's all I would do is you would stand at one side 
Just of, of the trident yeah yeah trident. And up and up and up and up and up and then you dash to them and knock them against the wall and then they're on the other side and then just rinse and repeat until they're dead <laughs> you asshole well superman was even worse superman his uh his spam move was his heat vision mm-hmm. um if you it would he would jump up in the air and then the beam would start at like a 60 degree angle and then go all the way across the field Oh, um, okay. so the only area like, if you wanted to be safe, you would have to stand in that small cone underneath Superman where it did where the beam yeah. didn't hit you. Got to be really good at geometry. Yeah, but you couldn't get there because if he if you blocked the beam, it would push you to the edge of the screen. And if you didn't block the beam, it would do a chunk of damage and knock you to the edge of the screen. And then you'd still get hit. Yeah. And so you, you like you didn't have if, if you had a smart such asshole Superman player, they would just you know, continuously walk against the back wall and then up spam lasers. Yeah. And then they, you, you couldn't do anything about it. <laughs> it was great. Fucking fighting games. Yeah. This is why they've never really been my jam. Except oh. for like Mortal Kombat 3. I was going to say Smash Bros. comes out this week, Chris. I don't give two shits about Smash Bros. You're going to give two shits about Smash I've Bros. Never, I'm like, going to host multiple tournaments. <sighs> okay, fine. I'll, I'll be there. I'll play Fox. Good begrudgingly there's 74 characters to choose from now chris yay yeah like no my, my friends in high school love smash bros we'd always go to my friend austin's place and play it i never cared like they would Were get you, really like, into it I og just, or melee um i guess which one which console was melee gamecube then melee okay because that's the best one that's yeah i think that's the one that, that's gamecube. still the one that's like in the competitive circuit okay yeah and so we we would always play that and again like every once in a while i join in and i always played as fox because I, I can so like kind of work with him mm-hmm. i'm never good i like never win first i can usually maybe sometimes squeeze second i just well now there's eight person battles oh fuck it. and they're so much fun because it's just pure chaos oh don't care you should because <sighs> it's fun I'll, i will i will come to one of your super smash bros <laughs> parties i will be there i will be there and i will support you mm-hmm well, I'm, I have to set up this Christmas decorations. I'm not doing it for myself. It's, it's, it's for the Smash parties. <laughs> okay, good. I'll I'll be there. There'll be alcohol, right? Uh, probably. Okay, if not, I'll I'll just bring alcohol. Yeah. No, I'll survive. I'll just get drunk. Uh, um, do we have any other news? We do. We actually do have some DC related news. Okay. Um, so we're a little bit behind on this because again, we took some a little little gap there. But the f- what seems to be the full title for Birds of Prey has been announced. Because Margaret Robbie posted on her Instagram, and it was a photo of the script as Bird of Prey, and then in pen below oh, it, she had okay. added and the fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn. So I, I saw I saw that photo. I didn't yeah. realize that was the t- full it, title. I mean, it's I don't know if there's actually been like official confirmation that's a full title. If people are just assuming it's a full title, I don't know what's going on there. Like, I'm okay with that being. The full title. I'm still going to call it Birds of Prey anyways. Yeah. It does convey some tone. I mean, I... It makes it sound like it's going to be like a spaghetti western. Yeah, which could be kind of fun. Well, yeah. And so my thoughts on this are... It's interesting because Birds of Prey has never really featured Harley Quinn. Or, or if she's been a part of it, that's a more recent thing. But yeah. the traditional Birds of Prey, of course, is Batgirl or Oracle. But Barbara Gordon, Black Canary, and Huntress. So the new the movie is going to have we know Huntress, Black Canary, uh, Renee Montoya, Cassandra Kane, who mm-hmm. was the successor to Batgirl. Yes, um, becomes Batgirl in her own right, and then now it's clearly going to include Harley as well. And I mean, I guess I would worry a little bit that it's going to be too much the Harley Quinn show. Yeah, but oh, yeah. at the same time, though. There is value to having that actor who's really connected with a character and can just kind of get shit done. I mean, I, I think the classic example now, of course, is Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool, right? But, like, I mean, he, you know, he extends all the way back to 2009 with X-Men Origins, and he just worked for years and years and years to make that thing happen, and eventually it did. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, I think Hugh Jackman and Wolverine kind of the same token there. Like, he was always pushing to make a better Wolverine movie, and finally got Logan, which was exceptional. So maybe this is a good thing, though. Like, neither of us really like Suicide Squad. <laughs> but how could you? But I think she was good in that. Well, my, my question about how they're going to handle Harley is now that Snyder's not in charge, um, 
if they're going to tone back the like the sexual nature of Harley. Mm. If they're going to if they're going to steer more psycho and less sexual. I would certainly hope so. Mm-hmm. We'll get we'll get the opposite of Justice League Wonder Woman. Yes. Oh god, I know. I mean, I I I would think we probably would. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think it also helps too that um, who's the director on Birds of Prey? Uh, what's her name? Damn it, where'd it go? I have an article up here. Shit, I don't know. Okay. Patty Manhays. Cat. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy Yan. Mm, I'm an asshole. And I should know this off the top of my head, but I don't. But anywho, um, yeah, Kathy Yan, Kathy Yan, yeah, and it's um, Christina Hudson is the writer on this. Yeah, no, uh, whatever. Chuck Dixon. What? No, Chuck oh, Dixon's writers. A, oh, okay, yeah, but so I mean, female writer, female director. Uh, female producer in the form of Margaret Robbie. Mm -hmm. I would like to think they would, yeah, tone down the sexuality of it and make it much more about God, I completely forgot that Mary Elizabeth Winstead is, uh, is Huntress. Oh, that's right. That makes me so happy. Like that just brought so much joy. She's really good. Seeing the casting again. It's a really good cast. Um, Ewan McGregor. Ewan McGregor as, uh, yeah, Black Mass, which is is exceptional. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really talented cast. I think we keep saying this though, because DC does cast well, even though they give us generally garbage films. But I have hopes for this. And I think having Margot Robbie as kind of like a power star producer on this, I think she can give momentum to things that otherwise would linger in development hell, which especially for DC has been a problem. Uh, yeah, I agree. So I think if if it means we have to have a Birds of Prey movie that with a lot of Harley in it, but that means we actually get a Birds of Prey movie, I think that's worth it. Because otherwise, I don't know if we would. Yeah, especially a movie, even if it is, you know, like you said, the Harley show. Just getting a a full female team out yeah. there, I think will be awesome. And especially with their big push of the um, Supergirls cartoon that's coming out right now. Oh the, yeah, the one that was in front of Teen Titans. Yeah, that was a really good short. It was. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. So that that show has been going on for three seasons. I mean, I do. Love no it. one talks about it. No, no one does. And I, I mean, I. But I think it's does decently well like i know every time i'm at target there's always like like an end cap section of a whole bunch of like dc girls toys mm-hmm. it's all the female he- heroes I'm like this is awesome like this is what it should be it's the same thing i have with star wars now every time i'm at disneyland and i see like little, you see a little ray yeah like little girls so, like, like ray so or like much. padme or captain phasm like yes like these things should be accessible to women too like yeah. this is not just like a boys only club like disney is disney's a boys only <laughs> club <laughs> Yeah. Let me tell you a little thing about Disney. <laughs> Those princesses Those are princesses, sham. Princesses, yes. I had a I had a, a very uh lively debate with my friend recently. Okay. Uh because I, I continuously say that that Meg from Hercules is the only uh is, is the is the only princess that deserves to be a Disney princess. The only one that is not. That is not. Okay. Correct. I think because it's fair. If you follow yeah. the four rules she deserves to be one. What are the four rules again? Like you have to be have like, to be human. Human rule okay. one, which is why Nala is not okay. Um, have to be born a princess, uh, married into royalty, mm-hmm. or uh, save the country yeah. so they can include <laughs> they Mulan. Can include Mulan. <laughs> uh, three movie has to be uh, box office success. So uh, who do they not include then? Uh, Kida from Atlantis. Even though uh, technically okay. she's a queen and not a princess, uh, very very specific because you know her. But her father dies in the middle of the movie, so then she becomes a queen. Yeah, so she becomes queen. So she started as a princess. Yes. Well, same with um, Elsa. And Elsa's not a princess. Anna and Elsa are not official Disney princesses. Don't you dare try and argue argue. But this wait with a me. minute. But wait a minute. Hang there on. There are only a handful of official Disney princesses. So. Okay, I believe you. I, As you I, I, I'm not about to argue with you on this. That would be foolish. Mm-hmm. That'd be like you coming at me with something James Bond related. Yeah. But no, no, no. My question was going to okay. be, you <laughs> haughty trollop you, mm-hmm. what is the deal then with Wreck-It Ralph? Because Anna and Elsa are in that scene. Yes. They, I think, uh, so the reason they're not official Disney princesses is because their movie made too much money. 
So they would dominate things if they were included? It's it's all about toy sales. So they like get their own special category. Yes. Okay. Yes. They're they're princesses with an asterisk. So they're not part of the You know it's pronounced asterisk, right? Nope. <laughs> There's a Japanese band called Asterisk. Asterisk. And that's they, they pronounce it wrong, and so I've I've always pronounced it as the band. Okay. Um uh, they're princesses I'm with a star just next sure to them. I'm right, you, you are right. You're right. Okay, good. <laughs> um, with the tiny star, yes. With the shift eight above them, <laughs> um, because when it comes to toy sales, if you go into a Disney store, you can buy the set of Disney princesses for eighty. Okay. Or the pair of Anna and Elsa for fifty. Of course, you can. Yeah, and so it wouldn't make sense to loop them in right because you've been missing out on all that money right okay <clears throat> all right that makes sense then mm-hmm. okay fine they're not official disney princesses yes they are too valuable yes and so meg and and, and rule four is, is the the movie can't be too successful okay all um, right so the so rule three is it can't be can't be i can't, I can't underperform be and it can't overperform okay, and so i I, spot. I did the math and if we i was i was trying to find the least profitable disney princess film and i believe it's princess and the frog i think so and yeah so if we which is a shame that's a really good movie it is it's a really really good movie um uh, if we you know adjust for inflation hercules made less than a million dollars more it, it basically made the exact same amount of money as princess and the frog okay uh so meg fits all of those categories and therefore should be I mean, a Disney princess. I I mean, I guess they would mostly go off box office, but I feel like that movie was successful. Like it, for the time, it was. It yeah, was like the fourth uh, best selling Renaissance film. Yeah, because it, it. I mean, it was that movie like had cultural saturation at the time, and and s- still does. People still love that movie. But I mean, yeah. to your point though, we, you don't see a lot of Hercules merchandise at Disneyland. No. I mean, it, it doesn't help that there's no ride. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there's other princesses. But that there's also have a ride, no but... Lion King ride. There's also no Lion King merch. Yeah. Uh, in, in Land, there's no Aladdin thing anymore. That's true. Uh, yeah. There's basically there's Little Mermaid. There's um, the characters of Beauty and the Beast walk around. There's Red Rose Tavern. Yeah. Uh, for Beauty and the Beast. Uh, nothing for Lion or nothing for Aladdin. Nothing for Lion King. Nothing for Hunchback. Yeah. Nothing for I feel like Hunchback wasn't as big as Hercules. Uh, it it still sold really well. Yeah. It was more adult, but it it still was a very profitable movie. I seem to recall there being like Burger King toys at the time. Mm-hmm. They even had some of them. Well, because it, it's it's wrong to say that there was an unsuccessful Renaissance film, because it's it's better to say the least best film. Right, of course, because they're all good. They're all good, and they all sold millions. Yeah, they all still did big business for them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there's no Hunchback. There's no Pocahontas. There's the the stump for Pocahontas. The stump. There's there's the the old tree, um, in uh, New Orleans Square. There so is. The, yeah. So there's the Mark Twain, the boat. Yeah. Uh, New Orleans Square, the Pirates Ride. Yeah. Right. Ac- if you're walking straight from the Pirates Ride exit or entrance to the water, oh, there's the the old tree stump. And that's they just put like a Pocahontas plaque on it or something. Yeah. Yeah, that, if, if you want to like meet Pocahontas, that's where she that's, is. That's oh, okay. I've seen her there before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. That's that doesn't seem fair, right? Yeah, there's no Pocahontas stuff. There's no Hercules stuff. There's no Mulan stuff. Tarzan has the treehouse. Yeah, which I don't think was even originally Tarzan. I feel no, like they, Swiss Army, uh, Swiss Family Robinson. Yeah, so they they totally changed that. Um, mm. There's very little Renaissance representation at uh, land, but I guess that does kind of make sense because little kids those movies don't have the same sort of impact like those movies we grew up on mm-hmm. but now it would of course it would be all like the more recent cg stuff because that's what the little kids know well and also they don't want to get rid of the classics well yeah of course yeah like they're not going to get rid of snow white or sleeping beauty or yeah Dumbo, like um <clears throat> like pinocchio because in fantasy land it's what it's snow white and Snow White's Scary Adventure, Pinocchio's... Oh, it's Pinoc- right, so, yeah, and, yeah. yeah, and then, of course, it's Sleeping Beauty's Castle. And then Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Mm-hmm. Um, Classic. Dumbo Flying Elephant. Peter Pan. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. I guess I guess Storybook Canal. That that's where they yeah, kind of snuck get, in yeah. the Renaissance no stuff. No one goes in the Storybook Canal. I love the Storybook. I Canal. do too. <laughs> but you and I are old-fashioned people. Yes. So. <laughs> Uh, what were we talking about this? We, um, well, why did I go on this tangent? I, oh, Meg. The, Meg. Meg. <laughs> Sorry. So his debate was Meg is not a princess. She's a duchess. And I got very heated on this rule. A duchess? Yes. Oh, because a duchess is your name when you marry into yes. royalty. So you, you, take, you're not- you're, you take your husband's name. So if we went with uh, the most recent, um, who, who just got married to him. Meghan Markle. Yes. So she is princess. Merkel. 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 Uh, Merkel. She is Princess Harry. Yes. Uh, she will never be Princess Meghan. Um, she will. She will only be Queen Meghan. Uh, because you, the only way to get a princess in your name is to be born into royalty. Wait. So she's how? What so do you mean so what prin- do you mean she's Princess Harry? If you were going by her rightful title, yes, she would be um, Princess. You know, you know, something, something, the princess Harry. Wait, I don't remember the full title, but it's not her or, or whatever their last name is. Okay, I was like, yeah, okay, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Um, Windsor? Sure. Yes? Uh, because there was a lot of debate, or th- what I read was basically everyone saying Princess Diane is not her official title. And there were a lot of interviews with her where she said not to call her that because that's informal. Windsor, Diana. Yes, um, yes I know... Yes, I'm oh, no, the, I, I said the wrong name. I said Diane. Oh yeah, or, yeah Princess Di. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, okay. Wait, then, so a Duchess. So it would technically be Duchess Cinderella, uh, Duchess Tiana, mm-hmm. and Duchess Belle, and Duchess the kitten, and Duchess the cat from Marissa Cats. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I'm like, if if you are accepting of these three princesses not being official princesses, then you should accept. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not actual royalty, though. His I mean, dad a, is the dem- king of the he's gods. A, well, but he's a demigod, though. What? Hercules is a demigod. Not in the movie. His mother is Hera. But isn't it by the end he, like, is a depowered? He chooses to stay mortal so he can stay with Meg. Yeah. But that does not I guess refute he's not a, his I, title of of prince of prince of the gods but like they don't use the terminology of like prince and princess and king and queen and that sort of thing neither do they neither or i guess uh hold on in uh <sighs> so well i'll argue pocahontas with this point we don't need to have this conversation right now let's talk about the episode because i will go out this will be the whole episode if we i also continue. can't remember how we got here i think i just randomly brought up a fight that i was having with dylan <laughs> okay of he he trying to dispute a princess for me okay all right then let's do it we'll, we'll get so if you want to know more about that debate, just send me a message on Instagram saying Meg is not a princess and I will go off. All right. <clears throat> yeah. Let, let's actually talk about Batman. Cause we keep trying to shorten these fuckers down and it keeps not happening. And we have two. We have three episodes to talk about today. We're going to have to blow through these real fast. Yes. Uh, OK. Great map. Great Batman Beyond. Episode. Yeah. So this is uh, this is Eyewitness, which I, I unfortunately read the episode description on DC Universe. So then what would have been a twist for me was completely spoiled. Uh, I did not read the description and okay. I loved it. Yes. OK. So then like for you, what what was this like? Because you you will, did not know the twist going into it. Um, I I mean, obviously something was going on. Right. Yeah. So I couldn't tell if it was a dream. Right. So terry is framed for murder yes batman excuse me to be more accurate is framed for murder Mm -hmm. uh a bad stand it it feels very similar to um what was the the batman adventures episode called um where it's barbara's dream oh over the edge over the edge yes yeah Yeah, and like bits of phantasm too with the the cops hunting him down mm -hmm. yeah so um it it felt like an old fashioned episode. It felt yes. like a BTOS episode. Yeah, because it because it's back to where the police and Batman are kind of at ends. Yeah. Uh cuz with without having Bullock, you don't really have that tension anymore. That's a good point actually. Yeah. It, our only window into the GCPD is just through Barbara, who mm-hmm. has her own very unique space. Actually, that's a really good point. Yeah, cuz we don't have Bullock no or Montoya. See, yeah, no one sees Batman as a negative for the city anymore. Yeah. Barbara yep. Barbara sees Bruce as a negative for the city, but not really Batman. Yeah, and even yeah, she's kind of like on the fence. Like she's always been on the fence in the the opening sequence of this, where uh, Terry as Batman messes up a sting, 
mm-hmm. kind of helps push her towards that idea of like this kid's a problem. Yeah. And, and again, we were hinted at his past. Really. Yeah. He was in juvie for three months. Yeah. So the, this is the first time it's like laid out explicitly. Like he was in juvie for this amount of time. I think it's still a while before we get the reason why he was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I still don't know. Yeah, but I mean, it like Barbara, especially here, alludes to like him just being a hothead and being like a little bit violent and aggressive. And so she has this mentality in her head when she sees mm-hmm. Batman supposedly kill Mad Stan. Mm-hmm. I, I, what I really like about this episode is watching this while watching Titans. Oh, okay. And yeah. I feel like, because like, I'm comparing the aggression to dick in titans yeah but i there has never been a more violent and aggressive character in the history of cinema yeah <laughs> or television mm-hmm. than titans dick grayson yeah absolutely <laughs> um but uh no i mean I, I also love that it was mad stan i did too because he's just that character is so over the top but he because he's so specific in his aims he always just wants to like disrupt the system and fight back against the man and stuff like that mm-hmm. he can just throw him into almost any situation and it just works yeah. well, i mean he was the inspiration for our filibuster that's true which that artwork thank you you, you never posted it I'll, I'll i'll make a story out of it so okay we it yeah we should on, also on like post it proper i oh, know i'm sorry i've been yeah. busy oh no, you're fine i'm forgetful and busy um and lazy yeah so so mad stan shows up during um commissioner gordon's speech about her husband he's he's trying to run for he's re uh, he's running for election as district attorney. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, so Mad Stan comes in and ruins it, has the building set to blow up. Uh, Terry shows up, beats up Mad Stan, and when Barbara catches up to them in the middle of the fight, she sees Terry deal the final blow to Mad Stan. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, she starts shooting at him, and he runs. And so now we're in this question of, like, what is actually happening? Yeah. And so, yeah, my first thought was dream sequence. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I, I, I didn't really immediately connect to Spellbinder, mm-hmm. but it makes sense that it is. Um, yeah, that was the problem is the, the DC universe description is Spellbinder frames Terry for oh. murder. I'm <laughs> like, God damn it. Cause they hold that reveal until the last couple yeah, the minutes. Last, yeah. Um, I kind of wish they did the ending differently. How so? It just kind of, it, it like, there was so much weight towards the end of that it's a little fast yeah and it's just like oh use x-ray vision and it's there and also they even they use like uv lighting to find which like if they were smart they would have hidden him in that scene and let us find him as well oh that would have been cool i was just bothered by the fact that that doesn't work that way yeah uh but whatever like the Light. whole the whole point of uv is that it's outside the visual spectrum of the human mm-hmm. eye yeah well no they used a device no they basically just on like a uv light oh yeah wasn't that basically what it was i guess it couldn't just be that because you just get a really bad sunburn mm-hmm. um fine they have some sort of device that allows them you know to yeah see. well so yeah so so terry is, is... but can we, can we hang on can we talk about the very specific gadgets that are on all the police vehicles in this city. Well, it's because Barbara knows how to fight Batman. I mean, I, I, I guess that's they, it. I think it's like, these are the cars specifically meant to like go after when Batman goes like, you know, when Batman finally if crosses goes, that line, bro. Yeah. Cause Barbara is ready. Cause one of the cruisers, one of the floating cruisers has like a fan on the front of it to blow away the smoke. Another one has a net, built into the roof Mm -hmm. yeah they have like that uv ray to spot invisible people yeah it's like oh we're getting i'm sure they have many a cord cutting devices for the (laughs) grappling hook i was just thinking like man this is some really reverse engineer stuff on these well because it's kind of the same thing you know it it brings me to kind of justice league war not war doom where it's bruce has a contingency plan yeah for every member of the justice league i'm sure after working for him for so long barbara has a plan for bruce you know what? i'll give you that he she would absolutely mm-hmm. have all that because i feel like she would and dick would because they're the only two that could stop him I, I don't think dick would actually have anything set up he would just know what to do he would know what to do but he would want nothing to do with it like that's yeah. that's the thing barbara 
would have these sort of things in place because she would be involved. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't think there's a lot of situations where Dick, who is estranged from Bruce in this universe, even yeah. though we never really figure out why, but that they are, that I don't see a situation where if, like, Bruce or Batman got out of hand, he would get involved with it. He'd be mm-hmm. like, nope, not my problem anymore. Yeah. But Barbara is like, would have that sort of sense of obligation to her and the preparedness. Yes. Because she's actually the smart one. Yeah, and yeah, and, and she's the one that kind of, I mean, they both understand him. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, she's the one that kind of figured it out on her own. Mm-hmm. For I mean, I mean, you know, when we meet her in, uh, Betos, she does do it on her own first. Oh right, of course, yeah, yeah, she's her own hero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, it, it, I did think it was interesting because they they have little hints, kind of, to something else going on, like when. Terry's in the morgue. There's like, oh, there's some. He feels like there's someone else there, and then we actually see the handle on the alarm like open up and get pressed. So it's yeah. like it implies there's some invisible presence there, which I, I wasn't a big fan of because I feel like we just had an invisible villain when it was um, the uh, the telekinetic kid. Um, mind wait, in mind well, games? Uh, Willie Watts. Oh, right. You made a ghost. Yeah. yeah. Right, okay, we we yeah, just yeah. had this kind of had story. Well, and I guess, because I see where you're coming from that. Like, we, we're already going, kind of going down that path. Maybe that's why they didn't really emphasize that. Because my problem was that moment seemed like it had to be spotlighted a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, just because that's a big thing. Like, if we're setting up there's something mysterious going on, if there is an actual invisible person there, that should build on itself somehow. And they didn't really do anything with it. Yeah. I mean, we're be- we're being nitpicky, but this is we are. It, it's it's my it's. I think it's my favorite episode of season two. Yeah, I'd say probably the same for me as well. Like, uh, I, I, was, I was really engaged with it all the way same. through. Um, yeah, like the whole. I mean, it's a pretty relentless chase. It's like from the moment that he leaves, he goes home, and the cops are there talking to. Well, his I think mom. It, that also shows Barbara's preparedness. She knows exactly yeah what the plan is if if shit hits the fan yeah. She knows exactly how Bruce is going to react. Yeah, send patrolmen to to Terry's mom's place. She went herself in person to the Batcave because she's the only one who could mm-hmm. do it. Um, even at the very end when, like, they're still chasing all over the city and Bruce tells him to go to, like, a secret tunnel to get out, she's there waiting for him. Yeah. that's a, That was a really good moment. That was really again, good, She yeah. would know all of these things. Yeah. And you're right. Yeah, she would have all these contingencies in place. That just that whole chase is really good. I mean, the stakes feel really high all the way through this. You, you feel like he's gonna lose, like it's because yeah. it, that's why I say it's it feels so similar to Over the Edge. Mm-hmm. It's like that's the only time we ever feel like Batman is gonna lose. Yeah. Um, and like I mean, you can't the 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 downside of Over the Edge is that it, it is clearly a dream sequence, kind of like right from the beginning because it's so insane. Yeah. Like Commissioner Gordon chasing him through the Batcave and blowing stuff up, like the. Things get elevated so quickly that we know we can't come back from that. Because I think part of the reason this is so good is that the stakes feel high because it's all very real. Mm-hmm. We This really could go horribly wrong. There's a yeah. lot to lose here. Yeah, it's kind of like how how could we possibly get back to status quo after this? Yeah. and I mean, they still find a way. They do. But, I mean, it... It does... You know, there's an arc here for Barbara, though. I, yeah, I loved the last line of Spellbinder. Yeah, remember, remember what it is again. It's, um, he said you were so ready to believe the oh, worst. It yeah. was so easy. Yeah, that, and it's it is that little exchange with them too, where she's basically like says sorry, and he's like, "Nah, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about but it." Yeah, we, everyone everyone messes up. Yeah, like I was yeah I was there not too long ago or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it, I mean, even the scene where Barbara goes to so after Batman busts like fucks up the sting and she goes to the house to talk with bruce they have that little like cordial moment where she's like talking about you know the coffee and he's saying oh i learned from the best of course being alfred mm-hmm. but then even he and like all right we've got through the requisite small talk what are you here to talk about and it's just i think that their dynamic is very interesting in this show and i like that it got highlighted here yeah absolutely because they, they each have their own relationship with each other Right. Like Barbara and Bruce had this long history that is incredibly complicated, just like both you know, personally and, if you will, like professionally in regards of heroics and being a cop and everything like that. And then, of course, you know, there's still always friction a little bit between Bruce and Terry. And this basically poses the question, of like, do you guys actually trust each other? And they have to. 
Bruce kind of has to give him the benefit of the doubt, um, which I think Terry has earned. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, Terry has his own, like, weird... Barbara's kind of a mentor in some ways, but, you know, she's not going to kind of hold his hand. But Barbara is showing him that there is another route. That's true. And yeah. I think that is so nice. Because, again, like, when we... Seeing watching this at the same time as Titans, yeah, like you, you're wait, you're we're waiting for Dick to find that other route that he keeps saying he's looking for. Oh, God, and I don't know if he's ever gonna get it because they I just keep dragging so. that shit out. Yeah, my God, we're gonna we're gonna have a, a very nice discussion about that in a minute. Yeah, I'll say. Uh, what what are the thoughts you got um, on? Um... Uh, I had two things. Um... Oh, so one. Doesn't Bruce have the ability to see through the eyes of the suit? That was a problem for me, too. Yeah. Like, there is a feed. And like, I think they just needed to, like, pad some dialogue. Yeah. And, like, like, describe it to me. Because, you know, it's implied at various points that he can't always see through it. That I think Terry has the ability to turn off that. Okay. Um. Yeah. I, I felt like they needed to be some explanation of that. Because... Like either you would, what you would expect, for me at least, is that even though Terry has the ability to like turn that off, it's always going. Like yeah, I would kind of see this as being like a body cam sort of thing. I would, I would oh, imagine yeah, absolutely. Because if you think about it from Bruce's perspective, that's an incredibly valuable asset to have. I mean, he is hyper observant, but you can totally understand him building that into the suit that there's always a recording going on, so that if he needs to go back and rewatch something, look for clues, whatever. He has ability to do that. Yeah. So you would kind of feel like that he'd be like, well, the... And we saw it in, in the first Spellbinder episode. We saw him use yeah, it. Yeah, he did. And yeah, I, I was expecting him to go, okay, well, the footage from the hotel was bad, um, but let me go and check the the camera mm -hmm. in the bat suit. I mean, I guess if they did that, it would kind of unravel things a little bit it would take away the the waiting period necessary to kind of like build up some of the tension and well then, just then show it, it to barbara be, too yeah it could be that but then it could kind of be a battle of uh like barbara's psyche of like you know like, is this a stress-induced thing oh okay so i think you. that that could be an, an interesting storyline of like is she you know she's working herself so hard that um she she just want you know what she sees, she fully believes. Yeah. And even if there's proof of what she doesn't, what she's seeing, like, I don't she, know. she she chooses what she wants to believe, regardless of what she's actually seeing. Yeah. Yeah. Where we we see her kind of lose touch with Batman's principles of never let emotion take over. Yeah. Where we see her kind of lose a sense of logic for a bit. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, and she could easily accuse Bruce of like you would do anything to yeah you protect you yeah, Terry you and also to protect this. yourself, which is what I was expecting because I I wasn't expecting the enhanced footage. That was the second thing I want to bring up. I want to know who were the enhanced. first who the fr I'm, I'm going to guess James Bond was probably first to do the enhance <sighs> bullshit for film. Let me something about this. Um, because that that would be the franchise that it makes most sense for. I don't think so. I mean, maybe not that I can really, maybe like like a. I mean, I could see it being like a '60s thing. Like, so either I, I like think, a Mission Impossible or a Get yeah, Smart, the only or Man from Uncle kind of thing. The only James Bond thing I can think of is in the Spy Who Loved Me. There's a microfilm with some plans for a submarine tracking system, and when they're looking at it, Bond notices a little thing down in the corner and he's like oh can you like zoom in on that thing over there and it zooms in and it's like probably more clear than it should be yeah but it's the stromberg because it makes me so frustrated it's, it as, is someone, really as someone who has to deal with pixels constantly yeah well because it, yeah it's like one if like files are corrupted like that like if they're static you can't you can't take clean that it. out you can't yeah. remove like static you can't take bad footage out yeah, you can't unpixelate something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you can't just like, yeah. There, there are resolution limitations. It really, it really bothers me too, actually. So, because I've had someone when I was when I was still in school in college, I don't remember who it was, but someone took a photo, like a, a semi blurry photo, and like, oh well, can't you just enhance it? I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. It's like, no. oh well, they did it in this movie. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. In a movie. In a fucking film. And I'm like, I can sharpen it 
which will help a little. Yeah, you can't. But you can't unblur a blurry no. photo. No, and I, I thought which is gonna... why it's, they got away with it in Smallville all the time. Oh, that's true. Yeah, he was he, the blur. He was the blur. No, and I thought they were gonna do that twice in this episode because, um, because well, yeah, there's not only them like, like taking the fuzz out of the. Um, oh, I guess that was the one time. It's like he takes the fuzz out of the video, but then he like zooms in and he can see someone yeah. lurking in the background. But I was glad though that he just saw a figure. And it wasn't like. Oh, enhance at the point. Like, oh, look. I, I was ready for the second enhance. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, it's clear. Yeah. Oh, can it. we just like put some like colorization on this too? And all of a sudden, look, it's Bellbinder. Yeah. I mean, again, we're, we're being nitpicky, but mm-hmm. I, this it's a great is, episode. This actually, like, legitimately is like a really great episode. Like, mm-hmm. hands down on the short list. Yeah. Without a doubt. I think that's everything I have. Yeah, I didn't, I, I just kind of enjoyed this one. Like, I, I think the only reason I had something little notes is because they just stand out because it's it's so good. But I really like this one. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so now we get to get on to uh, we're gonna, we're gonna some, rush some through double dose of Titans. Yes. Okay, so because we had Asylum, mm-hmm. I had to like stop and remember what had been going on beforehand. But it's like they still had is it Doctor Adamson? I want to say is the guy's name. Yes, the really bad actor. Mm-hmm. They have him tied up in that very strange bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, and he reveals that. Rachel is there to heal, which we already kind of saw yeah. a little bits of that. But he like cuts his own throat and then she heals it. Um, and then he's like, oh, we have your mother. And it's just like I still feel I still wish because like, yeah, they're they're playing into the healing aspect a lot. But I, I really wish when we see the deer heal, we see like the way she's healing is she's releasing her demonic power into them. Yeah. And so I'd have loved for the deer when it woke up, it either had black eyes or it had the two or the four eyes. Yeah. Like that would have been awesome. And then, you know, when she heal, you know, Dr. Adamson, uh, slits his throat to prove to her that she can heal him. Mm -hmm. Um, he, he would have a little bit of that demonic power, Yeah, like it sticks with him, but she can still remove. And then that would make sense where she could, like then she's not undoing the healing. She's removing the thing that is keeping them alive. Yeah. And I think that okay. makes more sense. That, oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That mm-hmm. would, because yeah, at least then it puts some, a little bit of stakes in there a little bit and like some consequence. Yeah. Because then they could, you know, use that power. Like if, if someone, if she heals someone who can tap into that demonic power and then they're a threat now. Yeah. That'd be much more interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it just gives it some, yeah, some, some friction rather than like, oh, I can just heal anybody. But yeah, so they, they go off to the asylum to get her mom, and of yes. course she's like, they're like, oh, we got to like, I, this is what's kind of frustrating about this show is that it just does shit that they should know better by now. Mm-hmm. Like, it just does cliches that have been buried more or less in a lot of other better mediums at this point. So it's like, oh, we need to just like take... 30 minutes to plan an approach rather than running off half cocked, but I'm just going to go do that anyways. And, Oh, I lied to them. I'm totally down with you to go do this. And Oh, what a surprise. We get caught as soon as we get here. Yeah. And my, my thing with the show is cause they've done it a few times. Now when we meet the new doctor, the, they, they do these reveals. Like we're supposed to know who yeah. they are. And this, that doctor doesn't even gets a name. I don't think she does. I think mean, no. she's just the doctor. And it's like, I think, Maybe we'll get into this more when we we talk about Donna Troy, but I think they just the show is cheap. Mm -hmm. This is my big problem with it is that it like you feel like you need better actors in this. Like, and I'm not necessarily saying that the guy who plays Doctor Adams or whatever is a bad actor. I, I think he just didn't have good material to work with, but he's doing a very weird thing that's not working, and it just it just comes off as being half-assed. Yeah. His performance feels half-assed. I think because everything around it feels kind of half-assed. It's like they all go off to the asylum. They all inevitably get captured. And then even their tortures were kind of pointless. Like Dick should fuck it. That the most frustrating thing is Dick should know how to handle torture. Well, yeah. Like, and like he was trained by fucking Batman. Right. Full. Like we, like, you know, you can't use the excuse of he left before he finished training. No. Like, like he, he was, is, he is a fully fledged Nightwing at this point. Yeah. And, I, and I, this is what was so, and they even allude to that, which then can, conf- cause the, the doctor's like, oh, maybe his training is helping him like resist the serum or whatever. Go give him some more. I'm like, wait, so does she know he's Robin? Uh, 
I think so. Yeah, I, I assume he had the case with him. Well, this is, yeah, because this is what also is confusing, is I think there was clearly, I feel like there was a deleted scene where he, they like grab the case out of the back of the van, they open it or whatever, and they see that he's Robin, which then explains why the case is in there, because it comes back in at the end when the building blows up and it's on fire. Like, where was this? Yeah. This was never explained. But like, yeah, my problem, my problem was there was nothing personal about the tortures, and there was also no purpose to them it's basically like oh we're gonna kill your friends if you don't join us is what they say to rachel mm-hmm. but it's not like i guess what they, i think they show clips or whatever but i didn't feel they like they could have honestly rotated all of them and it would have been the same stakes like well, they could have yeah. dissected beast boy yeah they could have brainwashed starfire and they could have electrotherapy dick and it would have been the exact same story yeah because none of those tortures had anything to do with them as characters you know it wasn't like we'd ever seen Corey, or she'd ever talk about like oh my god like my greatest fear is like you know be awake during surgery which would be a totally shoehorned and random conversation to have Mm -hmm. but had nothing to do with her and like at no point has gar ever talked about how you know he he feels like he's confined or in a cage or anything like that there there was no what i what i wish they would have done because the electroshock therapy thing is what um the the elastic girl Ela- elastic girl yeah from doom patrol that's that was her torture like that's what oh, she was put through right yeah and so like i they needed a scene to to solidify that where, yeah like he's like either have a flashback where he was being tortured before or mention that in that episode yeah. where like you know they took me in before i fell into the same circle that miss that elastigirl fell into right yeah it, it's like they needed to explain why these things were particularly bad for the characters they're happening yeah. to right we, like to we random. as an audience understand starfire like we know she's an alien yeah but she doesn't know that yet so i think her, she so, no, she does because she saw the alien writing well they don't know what they 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 because robin continues to say it's an offshoot of arabic Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So thought, they they, no, they just say it's. Figured, an, I thought they knew she was an alien at this point. I don't think so. I don't, I don't like remember. she's having flashbacks, but she can't understand that oh, they are yes, aliens. I guess that's yet. fair. But yeah, I mean, what I feel like they did on this was we they, don't know that until Donna Troy in the next episode. Donna Troy's like, no, this is not any yeah, it's, human it's, language. Yeah, it's like this is an offshoot like Sumerian or something like that. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, it felt like they just reverse engineered from some images. Like oh. Beast Boy will be in a cage like an animal and like, oh, wouldn't it be so cool to see someone like strapped to a table with like the, the incubate the an intubating hose mm-hmm. and, like going under the knife and, and oh like someone like their head wrapped into the chair and you know, even the the trip out sequence that Dick goes through, it didn't really do anything. Right. You didn't see him like you saw him start to fight his demon and then he just wakes up. Yeah, it, and they never settled it. No, and like we still need you. Like he's fucking fighting himself inside and losing (sighs) horribly. And it just and I like again, this is further problem when you don't have Batman around. Because like you're saying, he would have been trained to do this. So what I would have sorry, you you finished your. No, but it's like so. If what I feel like they should have been doing is like if they're going to torture Dick. That would have been interesting to then cut to flashbacks of him basically being tortured at the hands of Bruce and having to be told, like, this sucks, but it's for your own good. Mm-hmm. And then him kind of being put in a situation where he has to, he's finally now actually having to use that training and having to be like, fuck, it was worth it. Yeah. Like, it was horrible. Like, because that would have then contributed to the arc of him going, like, this was hell. Look at all the hell I've had to go through being Robin. But. I come out of it better for the end. But I think part of the problem is they don't know what his arc is. Right. And I, I think if they want to continue to shoehorn these like smaller characters in, I think this would have been a, such an amazing episode for Hugo Strange to pop up. Yeah. Where like he's yes. working with the doctor and then and then that answers the Robin question. Yeah. Or fucking Jonathan Crane. Like, yes. Like, why well, are we? Hugo Strange, I think Strange makes sense because he is the one that's been inside their brains right. before. Yeah. He could have gone in there and actually known these things. Yeah. But, and so he I, like then w- instead of needing the suit, you can just be like, oh, I've seen this test subject before. I've seen this readout before in a subject. Yeah. Like, I know who this is. Yeah. Well, this you know, is this is the bird boy. Yeah, like you're right. Like it could have been Hugo Strange, and like uh, for me, I was just like, why are we having someone basically being exposed to their worst fears? And there's no reference to the scarecrow. Mm-hmm. Like for a, for a show that loves to 
dump characters in front of us that only comic fans would know and give us no explanation as to who they are, what they can do. Talking about the next episode. Yep. They also don't love to then throw in the little casual Easter eggs that don't really affect the plot at all, but are fun references But are for, for us. Yeah. It, it's just, it's further proof that I don't think they know who this show is for. Right. Which is so baffling given that it's written by Jeff Johns. I, so after, after we finish this season, I would really be interested in you going to watch an episode of Gotham. <laughs> because I watched, I watched a compilation over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, cause I, I was very curious about the, their Joker, um, yeah. Jerome. And so I, I watched kind of a 30 minute super cut of all of his major scenes throughout his four seasons. Okay. Um, and watching that, I'm like, Oh, they're making this Gotham. Like this is the close, like this is no longer close to, uh, the CW verse. This is yeah. a lot more similar to the Gotham verse. The Gotham verse. Oh, that is not a thing I want to hear. I know. Cause it, and it, I, I want, I want, I want to say that. And then I want you to remember that you said you liked this. Well, like, okay, but hang on. Cause <laughs> I do like the next episode. <laughs> yes. But it, I think the problem is when it is, even when the episodes are good, there are problems in there. So that when the episodes are bad, there are lots of problems in there. Yes. It's like, if this was supposed to be the turning point episode where he gives up being Robin, the whole episode should have been about that because it ends with him. Okay. So let me see if I can follow along with how this all works out. So he goes in the dream sequence. He gets beat up by his childhood self. Who's like, you're fighting yourself. I hate you. I can't remember what exactly what he says, but so he gets out of it and he like, he decides he's finally going to reject the, idea of robin and like so when they're trying to leave the building and they he like beats the crap out of all those guys again and everyone mm -hmm. looks on and like it's finally really acknowledging how horrible he is with these with his rage even though it's the exact same thing that's happened about a billion times before he looks down in the puddle and he sees robin and he's like he has this moment where he's like okay there's gas Corey, light it and she's like are we doing this and i thought he was gonna go no right because that would have made sense for the arc they seem to be setting him up on of him like re like realizing that because this is what also is baffling is that's not what batman would even do but i guess this version of batman yeah, and might. This, yeah this one might yeah so like he has to go no i won't do it like we can't kill them but he's like no go ahead and kill them and the place blows up and then all of a sudden like his suit is just sitting out in the front lawn on fire and you're just like they're trying to – they're telling us there's weight to all these things that are happening, but they're so inconsistent with the story arcs and the emotional arcs and the characters that you don't believe any of it. It doesn't right. actually carry the weight that they're telling us it should have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. It's just it's just a huge fucking mess. Uh, so I, I, I wrote this, I've, I've realized I've written this down in three episodes in a row now, so okay. I need to bring it up. Okay. Cause I wrote it in episode eight as well. Um, when they're trying to bring Dick out of the, the comatose state. Yeah. Uh, Rachel Raven goes up to him saying, you promised you'd never leave me. And I realized he has left her. I think he has left her in every single episode so far. I think about this. So in episode one, I mean, he had to make that promise, but he leaves her in the interrogation room. Yeah, just to go home. Just to go home. In episode two, he's going to leave her with Hawk and Dove. Yep. Which is after he's made the promise that he won't leave her. Right. Um, episode... Episode three is when we meet... Is episode, when, is, uh, that's when we meet Corey. Oh, that's right. Episode three is basically just... I think episode three, they're not in it, right? No, they're in it. I just don't think... I think they're just driving... I'm trying to remember because you're basically right. Like, because once he comes back, he's gonna then gonna like. He. No, they go to the the they the um they go to the monastery, and then he leaves her with the nuns. Oh my god, that's right. Yeah. He, okay. So yeah, he then. Uh yeah yeah they go to Doom Patrol yeah he leaves her with the nuns he then tries to leave her with like Starfire he leaves her at the the townhouse all he does is leave her behind. Yeah. Every episode he has left her. God when she it. continues to say, you promised you'd never leave me. <laughs> Every all, single episode. That's all he does. I mean, that, but that's like, like. But like, how Bruce is that? It's so, it's very, <laughs> very Bruce. Also, like, uh, you pretty much get on this because I was going to like have a segue note from 
Uh, hold on. Yeah, he sees her mom. I think the mom was way too trusting of her uh, because oh, apparently right. she's been tortured for years. Oh, that's right. Of course. I forgot that we meet the mom in this episode. Yeah, we, we meet, um, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ab- no, Angela. Angela. Angela Azarath. Um, I won't go into the whole Azeroth story. It takes up too much time. Yeah, it's confusing uh, as fuck. I made a joke. It said, see Marvel, we can do fi- we can do hallway fight scenes too. <laughs> no, you uh, can't. But they're much worse. Much, much worse. Um, at least they all, they're all still breathing. Oh, when he, when he knocks out all the guards, I said, and then he they're still burns breathing. them all. Then he blows then them he up. Then he blows them all up and yeah. kills them all. Um, I said, Dick kept them alive so he could burn them to death. Good. Yep. Even worse. Uh, I said, even, even Starfire's fur coat wouldn't burn. Nice. <laughs> oh yeah. <that's laughs> right. Yeah. That doesn't make it. Uh, and yeah, sense. my biggest problem with this series and it's why I have such a negative voice coming into the episodes uh-huh. or coming into the, our recordings is they don't know how to end an episode. Yeah. Every episode feels like the writers, like it, in like from like a writer's room perspective, it honestly feels like they don't know when their last episode's gonna be, mm-hmm. and so they try and write every episode like it's the end of the season. Yeah. Because uh, this one even had kind of a cliffhanger, and I didn't care for it at all. Yeah, I mean, I think they are approaching it from a. Not not a binge TV mentality, but we started like the first time I can think of episodes being structured like this is like way back in Battlestar Galactica, where there's kind of a closure point, and then the last few minutes it sets up something so you have to go back. And then Breaking Bad was notorious for this. Yeah, break, uh, Westworld does it all the time. Westworld does, it's like it's now a thing where yeah. it's just like there's like a little mini resolution, and then there's a lead in to the next thing. And this show just does it in a very clunky manner, where it's like it's not even that they're setting up something to then needs to get answered or paid off. It's like they will just cut in the middle of a scene and then pick up where we left off. Yeah. The next episode, which is not, which, which is what they do. Excuse me. is what you do in binge television. Yeah. Like you said at the top. And it's, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. And for me, I think what we're seeing is all a whole bunch of hallmarks of this is just too long. Mm hmm. So it's going to be 11 episodes. We don't need 11 episodes. Yeah, so we of have this. What, three more. Cause it ends on the 21st. Is the final yeah, we episode. have three more. Yeah, and I'm just like, this should have been like a tight six to eight mm-hmm. because it's gotten very repetitive. And it was hard for us, what I was saying earlier about the budget. It's like, imagine if they had had oh, God. the same budget but spread out over a fewer episodes. They probably could have gotten some better actors, to, mm-hmm. be, to be honest, like some just a little bit like bigger names in there even, just more recognizable faces rather than just – like this is a more generic pool of actors than even the CW is pulling from. Better actors, a little bit better, just like budget, just like effects budget and choreography and camera work and all that stuff. Like it all could have had just a bit more polish. I, I think you would have been more economical with your writing too. Um, and it just like with in Donna Troy, for the most part, I really liked this episode because it was focused on character and it was mostly pretty fun i i too. continue i continue to say that jumping to episode eight now i continue to say that they're so much better at writing the non-main characters it's true yeah like dove and dove and donna i think are the two best characters of the show so far oh yeah absolutely oh oh, oh, oh. sorry episode seven real fast uh beast boy joined the killing club oh yeah it was he, like, he had his first taste he, of man meat i know and he felt guilty about it and had a shot of tequila and donna troy mm-hmm. i mean at least one person also, I notice how gracefully I walked past the comment about man meat <laughs> and tasting it. Um, but yeah, he, I, I guess at least someone finally acknowledged that it's not good to kill people, that you should probably like stop and think about it a little bit. When she's the one who I think has killed the most people. Oh my God, yes. She <laughs> kills more cops than Donna Troy, too. Yeah. And I, I will get to the parts I dislike. I'm going to try and talk about the stuff I do like for a bit. Uh, any, any scene that doesn't invo- involve Donna, didn't like. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, because they, they're all like, Okay, we killed mm-hmm. this group, this cult, basically. This cult that was after Rachel because they wanted to get to her dad. Which lines up, at, like, when the mom fills in the backstory, I think that more or less seems to kind of line up with the Trigon stuff. Um, so, like, okay, we're all kind of back together, and, you know, we're going to try and kind of, like, be a family. So the mom's like, oh, we'll go to my place. Like, obviously, Rachel, you come along. Gar, you come along. And Corey's going to go, too. And Dick's like, no, I, I have to leave. That's all I ever do. Yep. 
But he's like, no, I have to go kind of find out who I'm going to be. Like, okay, I can believe that. And I can also believe that he would go to Donna. Because, like, that opening scene is where it's them as younger kids. It's still kind of weird. It's just Dick throwing a temper tantrum. And we don't know who this person is. But she's just hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, because our only reference to her at this point is a photo in Dove's apartment. Yeah. Uh, where it wasn't even the young version of her. No, it wasn't. It was weird. Oh, wait. Okay, also, I'm a little bit... Didn't... Did they allude to dick and donna being in a relationship yeah yes but that's weird because the way it plays out here it's like it's just a friendship yes it's almost like a sibling thing yeah which i really liked actually Mm -hmm. i mean one i like anytime we see just a genuinely platonic relationship between uh, male and female characters yes uh and it was also nice because like i feel like we saw dick smile in this episode for the first like genuine time yeah and he was like because Dick, so going back to improv, improv terms, um, th- th- for the past seven episodes, Dick has always been the high status character. Yeah. No matter who he's with, more powerful or not, he always has the high ground. Yeah. And the second he meets Donna, he immediately becomes the low status character. It's great. Yeah. And he he just becomes a child. Yeah. Like, he has, like, no social graces. He's just kind of awkward, which I still don't understand how that works because – Dick Grayson is supposed to be, like, one of the most charming people on the planet. Yeah. Um, like, Maybe she has to teach him. I guess, but, like, I, I mean, I, okay, I guess I keep saying, like, I'm okay with the fact that their version of Starfire is nothing like Starfire. So I guess I should be okay with the fact that their version of Dick is nothing like the Dick we know. But also, that's just a more established character. And I feel like that's the problem with a lot of what DC is doing is they're taking drastic departures from characters that are so well established that that's why you're getting backlash on it. Yeah. It's like, I mean, obviously there was a big falling for Iron Man before the first Iron Man movie. And from what I understand is I think that there's a lot of differences between the comic character and that one. I've only really read the ultimate version of him, Mm -hmm. but for me, from what I knew about Tony Stark, it was close enough and they gave that character some personality. And here it's just like, it still has to be Dick Grayson. Like, he, yeah, should, he has, has some aspect of Dick Grayson. Yeah, he has to be charming. He has to be charismatic. Like, he's supposed to be one of the most attractive people on the fucking planet. Like, he should walk he into... He was fucking trained by Bruce to be... Because they even... Like, Donna even alludes to that twice. Of, like, you know, what did Bruce teach you? Yeah. Not to be... It's like, imagine you're on a yacht with Bruce. Right, yeah. Uh, like, he... And he's just like, I wouldn't be there. It's like, fuck you, Dick. You would be there. Yeah, Bruce... Ha- has a facade he's an he has, puts on an act that is very well practiced and you know for a fact that, that would be part of dick's training is here's here's how you deal with these sort of situations like dick would have been going to the most exclusive high-end illustrious events for his whole life his basically. entire life he should know how to walk into a room and do small talk yes and that's what's weird is that this show a lot of it's about what it's like to be a, a human, be a person who also happens to be a superhero, but it ignores the fact that these all these people would have had lives outside of being superheroes. Yeah. I mean, the only one that makes sense is Corey because you right. can continue the I don't have a memory yeah. and, uh, excuse. Yeah, and like and Gar and Rachel are all like new to this. Yeah, Gar Gar also makes sense because he was raised by outsiders. Yeah. So he only knows how to he, he should have the he should be the most socially awkward. Yeah. But I mean, like, like they do. But that's why I think part of the reason they do Donna so well is that she has all that shit figured out. Mm-hmm. And she, like that actress is so good. Like that character and that actress are so charismatic. They trick you into thinking that Brendan Thwaites has charisma too. Charisma too. That like watching this episode, that's what Dick should be. Yeah. Like that from episode one, Dick should have been the voice of reason, and everyone else just trying to like go against him. Of like they think they can do it better. Yeah. And. Like that, that's why Donna is so good. And that's why this episode is so frustrating is like Dick should be at that point at this are already. He, he should be. Yeah. My, my big points of frustration were again, there, there's still muddled sense of who that character is in his arc, but Donna is really fun and funny and engaging. And I, they actually do have good chemistry. I think, um, I, I actually think that, um, Dick and Corey have decent chemistry too. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, sometimes a little bit off, but again, I think that's like, it comes down to the capacity of the actors they're working with. And it's just the, um, Corey, like she's very good. She's very charismatic. So she just elevates any scene that she's in and Donna as well. Um, I, I like, I feel like 
this episode sets up a situation where we're not going to get a chance to see like fun Corey hanging out with fun Donna, which makes it really sad. Cause I feel like that would have been a really fun dynamic. Oh yeah. It's disappointing, but she's really good. And when it's just the two of them kind of hanging out, I really liked it. Um, but you feel like they, and, oh, oh my God, the fucking, the line she said, well, I, I wrote it down cause it was so good. And they were talking about their upbringing. Yeah. And it was, Donna said, Wonder Woman was created to protect the innocent. Oh, yeah. Or Batman was created to hurt the guilty. Yeah. And that's why we, that's why we are the way we are. And it's like... like they, they see the world from completely... Di- they, they do the same thing, but they see it from a completely different perspective. Yeah. And like that is, that is a very insightful thing for her to say in the context of the story. But it's an insightful thing for a character to say in a show, which implies that... The writers are aware of these things. I think every episode. I think every episode has one good line in it. I think that's fair. Yeah, now there's some like that whole. The two of them together are really good. I thought the whole weird thing about the 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 poacher was that all just a setup so that she had an excuse to be looking through the photos on his phone. Yeah. Well, like, oh, I think it was it was showing him that he doesn't look at the, he doesn't look at big pictures. Which is not big. Which is a metaphor because the photo gallery was was the art gallery was just big pictures. Just big pictures. Ah, it's a, yeah, it's a big metaphor. So <laughs> like, but at the same time, hasn't he been like the big picture guy this entire time? Hasn't he been kind of like the one like, oh no, let's do this the smart way? Yes, but of even then, it's it's still like we're gonna go and beat this person up, and then yeah. they're gonna lead us to this person who we're gonna beat up, who's gonna lead us to this person who we're gonna beat up. Where Donna is more like, I'm going to let him get away so I can follow, which is something Batman would fucking that's, that's do. Thing, that's something Batman I'm would do. let it's him like, get away so I can see where everyone else is. Yeah. So it's, it's less time consuming and I'm not going to, like if, if I lose the chain, like if I kill person C, then I can't get to D through J. And actually that's a very good point and further confusing what's going on here because that's really good detective work. Oh man. Which is a bit of a problem when he, when well, he's a fucking, de- he, 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 his he was, job he was not be a only detective, not only was he literally a detective, but he was trained by the world's greatest detective. Yes. And he doesn't seem to get this. It's like, they just decided that the violence was going to be the thing. Yes. That's like the only thing he learned was how to be violent. And he learned that because apparently the only thing that Batman does is be violent, which clearly cannot be the case if he's also in the fucking Justice League. Like, this version of Batman has to be more than just the pissed off guy going around beating the shit out of people because he's working with these super high tier characters. Do you think Diana would hang around him if all he did was go around and beat the crap out of people? I mean, if it was men. If I mean, it was, okay, if yeah. it was just men he was hitting. Well, to be fair, men generally deserve that. Yeah. But, like, she w- clearly has to have a respect for him. Right. To the point where she would know his identity, that she would bring her protege along to hang out with his protege at their house, have a little fucking play date together. Like, mm-hmm. it's all just so inconsistent. Yes. And I think that's the problem is that kind of like when we met Hawk and Dove back in the second episode or even when they finally all got together, they are actually pretty decent about letting all the characters play off each other and be engaged with each other and be fun. But then the plot lines often suck. I think it's honestly just Dick. But even the plot lines here were like on the Corey side are problematic. So she's on the train with Rachel and her mom and Gar mm-hmm. and they're all heading out to Rachel's mom's house. And then she keeps seeing this guy eyeing her and she thinks something's going on there. And so she like attacks him and then he's like, no, I'm just some guy. I thought that was supposed to be the whole point. Yeah, that, sh- that she's kind of turning into Dick. Yeah, that sh- I thought she had to be learning the lesson of like, okay, maybe not everyone's out to get me. Maybe things can be okay. But then she-, she was right. You know what I wish they did? Because I noticed, I think it was just the actor wasn't great again. Mm-hmm. Uh, I noticed the bartender kept looking into camera. Uh, <laughs> I miss that. <laughs> uh, but what I would have found so much more fascinating is she went like if she went after the wrong person, like she oh, thought okay. like the she... bartender was the undercover cop. That would have been more interesting. And so when she goes, you know, when she goes to attack the the innocent guy, like then you would see the bartender pull the phone out of like, yeah. yes, this is her. I've seen, I you know, I see her power. Also, I forgot that happened. I totally forgot that she was still wanted by the police. Yeah, same. I feel like they should just let that go, because 
that did nothing to serve the plot. Mm-hmm. All it, it was just there to create conflict in a story that probably didn't really need it. Mm-hmm. Like you get the sense in general that they felt they had to inject conflict everywhere in this episode, which wasn't necessary. I think if they had actually had it be an, an increased sense of relief, then the final twist on it would have had that much more of an impact. If it really does seem like everyone finally gets a chance to breathe. Yeah. Yeah, because I was waiting for something to be wrong with the mom. Yeah, like that same. whole episode, I'm like, oh, like, don't trust her. Yeah. Like, you don't know each other. No. Like, you, you saw a woman and assumed it was your mom. Right. Nothing here says that it is. Yeah. That might have been even more... That would have been more actually a really interesting way to take it. If if the plot there had been that Corey was very skeptical of the mom and that she was mostly sticking around to keep an eye on Rachel and that her like she was being paranoid and then she came across a situation where she was wrong about her paranoia and then she like tried to let it go. Mm-hmm. And then she which then would have been a better setup with the end where like now she's the threat. Yes, she absolutely. thinks the threat is everywhere. Because like the problem is here is that in the middle of this episode, she's still a threat because she kills a bunch of cops. Yeah, that for no reason. I, I really want her to like learn how to get out without because because we know her power is very limited at this point. Yeah, it's just shooting fire. It and only a limited amount of fire. Right. Yeah. When, especially at night. Once, she, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once she's out of sunlight, she you know gases out really quick. Yeah. So it would make sense for her to know how to escape without explosions which is interesting because when we first meet her they set her up as this almost like james bond kind of character who could actually get out of a lot of situations without having to use her powers and right. now that's her only go-to is like oh, i'm just gonna shoot fire out of my face mm-hmm. and and they also set her up to be kind of this like seductress yeah which i'm fine them not going that route with her but it was also like a capability she has like she knows right. Like, because we see her walk down, you know, when she gets caught, we see her walk down the, the you know, the, the rooms. And so, like, if she's trying to escape the cops, knock on a random guy's room. Yeah. And just, you know, like, hi, there's a guy that's trying, there's, there's a guy that's been following me around. Do you mind if I, like, hide out in here with you for a little bit? Yeah. Because I, I feel like if she is using her sexuality of her own agency with her own agenda then that's a good thing if it's just like everyone's like oh my god she's so hot we only like her because she's hot that's a problem but if it's Mm -hmm. like oh i have power i'm in control i know what i'm doing yeah i'm going to use this as an asset this is an actual asset i have then it's it's good and it works and it fits her character yeah but it's like that whole stuff with the cops was just unnecessary conflict in there and then like i was saying with the whole thing with the poacher it's like that was all felt really gratuitous and again it, it legitimately because that was even weird she's like oh my god like take some photos of me pass out next to him so yeah, I my can, question like, is why one if if she got knocked out by this random person as well one why did he take the photos of them together yeah. two how did she get the photos of them yeah. together it, it it doesn't like her logic doesn't make any sense and it seems like it's just reverse engineering for a reason for her to be looking through the photos on her phone which on dick's phone which if they're friends that would just happen yeah like she's a fucking photographer yes like hi yogi dog cast is back um (laughs) podcast dog yes it's it's the dog cast yes dog cast welcome back to the dog cast um yeah her job is a photographer yeah so it would like you know they come across a scene of some kind they come across a crime scene and she has to, like, oh, let me take a photo of this. Yeah. They could have done any number of other things. But it's, like, I I had I liked this episode when it was being fun and playful. And then when it was trying to, like everything else in this series, when it was trying to inject conflict that just was really half-assed, it was a problem. I did, though, really like the final turn mm-hmm. of Rachel being like, hey, I can heal. Let me try and heal you. Because even that for me played well of this idea of like Rachel being a little bit younger, naive and being like, Oh, your brain's broken. I can heal brains. And Corey being like, that's not how this works, but sure. Let's go for it. Um, and to then f- that realization, like, Oh shit. Like Corey's here to kill the Raven. Yeah. Th- I mean, that moment was really exciting for me. I was yeah. like, Oh shit. And we, and like, we got, our, and we got two names. We, we finally get Rachel Starfire. called Raven. Yeah. And we get Corey called Starfire. So I had a moment there when, when Donna's like reading through like the translation, like, 
oh, this could be like Star or Nightfire. I had a moment like, wait, what's the name of her sister? Blackfire. It's Blackfire. But I had a brief moment. I'm like, wait a minute. If that... Starfire and Nightfire? Well, like, I, I forget. Because actually, Nightfire is... Um, the, in some iterations, they have a daughter, and that character goes by, I think, Nightfire. Okay. If I remember. It doesn't matter. Are you... Are you wait, sorry. I'm going to put words in your mouth for a second. Were you predicting that we haven't been seeing Starfire? Yes. This has been Blackfire the whole time? Yes. That would be awesome. I don't think it would have been awesome, actually. I mean, I just, I just really enjoy Blackfire. No, I do, too. I think the problem becomes... In the one episode I saw her in, in Teen Titans. Right, yeah, she's really good in that. And like that, Gosh, she's that such a good character. That sister dynamic is really interesting. Mm-hmm. I think it's a problem when you you set up one thing and then pull the rug out. Mm-hmm. Like, has there ever been a time when a we basically been like lied to what a character is and then it's been revealed and it works. Like, so I'm thinking of um, like John Harrison and Khan in, in Star Trek into darkness. I'm of course thinking of uh, Blofeld and inspector. It's like, when does it ever actually work to be like, here's you think this is guess what? It's not uh, the has faceless it- man in game of Thrones, <sighs> the faceless man in game of Thrones. He has like four reveals where you think he's one character, but and like, he's about to kill Arya. But I mean, that's, like, that's kind the, of that character has failed. Like that's kind of his whole thing though. Right. Yeah. But I'm talking about like still a character reveal. Yeah. But that's not like, that's not in the same vein though. It's like, no, that's who this person is like not, it's not like we were told like, those are all minor characters and we revealed that it's, it's not that right. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, we were telling you like if they had spent the entire like publicity and show going, this is Starfire. This is Starfire. Nah, we're yeah, having yeah, yeah, you yeah, give yeah. all this time dedicated to, building this bomb between these characters everyone loves her and they're like oh by the way it's not actually starfire it's blackfire that would have been really obnoxious okay, yeah, yeah you're right especially with all of the absurd criticism around that character when she was first revealed like oh she doesn't look like the character it's like me terrible that would have felt like a really like clunky way of being like well, let's just take a step back on this so i i realize i've gone on a rant for something that doesn't even matter no um, no i i you you have changed my mind i i agree it would have been a it would have been a bad good. decision i'm glad <laughs> Yeah, that that would have been bad. But I mean, I'm I'm excited we're to see what happens now. Although I think we're gonna have to wait an extra week because it looks like the next episode's all about Hawk and Dove again. Yeah. Well, I mean, they they are usually pretty good about splicing in, you know, other people into the episode. Yeah, but I mean, even but but this needs to be a full episode kind of thing. Yeah, because like, even this like has to be the main part. Yeah, because actually no, because remember episode two ended with. The fight with the the nuclear family on the rooftop with yeah, Hawk and Dove. Yeah, episode two was all Hawk and Dove and Dick. Yeah, and then it, that ended, and then three was all Starfire. And it wasn't until episode four we came back to the story thread of, like, Dove getting knocked off the, the top of the building and the nuclear family capturing Raven. That was like, they made us wait. I think they're going to do that again here. Okay. I think we're going to jump back to DC. It's going to be about their, all their backstory, all that sort of, which I'm fine with because they're both really good. Yeah. But I don't I don't think it's backstory because in the in the preview it's um Hawk going to his brother. His brother wants to take over the mantle of Dove, which is what we get in JLU. Oh, is it's, that's yeah, right. Hawk and Dove are brothers. Oh, okay. I just saw it from the yeah, I didn't watch the preview, but I saw the description. It was like we learned the backstory of how they came together or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that yeah, that can be done in in modern time too. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they love their flashbacks in this they series. Love their flashbacks, my god. I don't know. I'm like I'm still weirdly kind of on board though with this. Like like I said, it's they they. I mean, this episode had a good ending. It did. But, it had but some good up to this stuff point, here. every episode just leaves such a bad taste in my mouth, which is why I come in so negative. Yeah. But then when it gets back to Friday, I'm excited because I kind of forget the ending. Yeah. I'm excited for a new beginning. <laughs> well, we can keep being excited for about three more weeks. Yay! So, and, um, but and then and then we get. Uh, uh, Young, Young Justice. Justice I know. Back. I need to do a catch up on that because I've only seen that whole thing once. I gotta, I gotta mm-hmm. re- do a, a rapid rewatch on that. And some, something comes out on the oh, series of unfortunate events comes out on January first. Oh, fuck, that's right. The Damn finale. It. I don't have time. I don't have time for any of this. I was about to say garbage. That's probably it's all good stuff. I'm yeah, it's about all good it. stuff. I'm watching this garbage instead. Um, any other thoughts on this, or should we mosey along? Uh, I believe. Yeah, that's pretty much everything. <laughs> all right. So, oh, I sorry. I tried to. I I really enjoyed my like going back in going into the history of the doom patrol i tried to do the history of donna troy but it's so horribly convoluted Mm -hmm. that i made it post-crisis where like the opening sentence was um 
there were 12 apostles under the gods who all laid eggs to destroy earth. Like, and I'm like, no, nope. I, I, I'm, I'm not going down I'm this out. rabbit hole. I'm out. Maybe that's why they didn't give her any like backstory in this. It's just basically like she's Wonder Woman. She never even says Wonder Woman, mind you, or Wonder Girl or any of those sort of things. No, she, she says she, Wonder Woman. Does she? Oh, I guess she does say Wonder Woman, yeah. But yeah, yeah. it's like, oh, Diana's protege, and she has some powers. Yeah. She's like strong and can leap or whatever. She's mm-hmm. basically just Jessica. She's, she's Jessica Jones. Yes. Yeah. But not not an alcoholic. That we know of. That's true. Yes. Just keep hiding give, it really well. Give it some time. The, in, this, in this, this universe? Dick. In yeah. this universe? It's quite possible. Um, we'll do a, a few quick notes from friends here. Um, uh, so one is just a shout out to uh, the DCAU Review, another podcast that does a similar thing. Um, to us, they just, they're not doing it chronologically as we are. Um, but they just did their first episode on Justice League. They just did like, it was like Ooh. their 30th episode. And so they did Secret Origins, the three part of there. So nice. Um, yeah, go check that out because we're dying to get to Justice League. We oh just, my God, we yeah. have a ways to go to get there. So if you are looking to wet your Justice League whistle before then, go check them out. Um, and also congratulations guys on getting 30 episodes. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, we got a, a message on Twitter from, uh, this group and there is going to be a Batman and popular culture conference at the Bowling Green state university in Ohio in April 12th to 13th of this upcoming year. Ooh. Um, it might be challenging for us to get to Ohio, but they're basically saying like, you know, they want to have all kinds of different, um, like thoughts and pieces and papers and essays and, you know, just analysis on, um, Batman and pop culture. And so I, I forwarded that along to, uh, like DCAU review and DC watchtower, Maddie and all those guys. And, I think they're working on something, and I don't know what we yes, might I, I actually contribute. forwarded it to my, to my old teacher. Oh, yeah, of course. Because yeah, I, I took uh, my favorite class in college was comics and or, uh, comics and pop culture and media. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, pass it along, yeah. But no, I mean, it, it sounds like a really awesome event, and we'll find some way to, to contribute. I don't know if we'll be able to go necessarily. I'll draw them a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Your pictures are really good. Thank really you. good. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to work on it. Yeah. Um, and then we uh, we also got a, a really interesting question. Let me um, let me bring up the the name of the user here. I want to make sure I give credit. But uh, they were basically asking what we think uh, Earth Twelve is it Earth Twelve, aka what like the the technical name for the DCAU. Um, what that would look like in 2018 2019. Okay. Um, so the uh, da, 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 da. so are, are they saying if it was created today or if it was in, if it was part of the new fifty two verse? No, like what would it look like now? Like so, if like the timeline had followed through, like if we were still in the world of the oh, DCAU okay. now, um, what would it look like? So uh, Crawford Graham was the the listener. Um, and yeah, basically they want to know what Earth twelve would look like in our current time. Like who would be president? Would there be any like major changes to our world and um, I also forwarded that along to Maddie. I was like, this seems like it's your area of expertise. <laughs> um, Cause I also want to see if they'd cover that territory at all. That's, that's a big question. Yeah. This yeah, really interesting. Like a bonus episode kind of yeah. Thing. There's some interesting stuff to explore there. So I, I want to make reference to it now, uh, cause we have read it and it's a really interesting idea, but I think we might try and actually dedicate some proper time to thinking about that. Cause yeah. Um, one, we tend to run long anyways, but, but also I think that's a question worthy of proper exploration. So. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all we got in terms of notes from friends. All right. That being the case, Cameron, what are you plugging? I went to the movies a lot over the break. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll, I'll limit it to, to two. Okay. Uh, I'll do a good movie and a bad movie. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the, the lesser known movie that I went to go, or I mean, I, sorry, I went to go see Wreck-It Ralph. Obviously that's not a, pl- I mean, it'll be a half plug cause obviously I went to go see it cause it's Disney. Yeah. It's great. Okay. Uh, but the, the fun movie which I went, which I went to go see was a film called Anna and the Apocalypse. Yeah, that looked... Um... Uh, for those who don't know, who haven't seen the trailer for it, it is a Christmas zombie musical. Yeah. Uh, it and it's so, weird. so much fun. Yeah. It's, this, this is going to sound like a deterrent for a lot of people, but it's the only way I know how to describe it. Uh-huh. It, so- it feels like a very high-budget decom. Okay. Yeah, where it's that kind of like weird musical. Yeah. Uh, the first 20 minutes are kind of your typical teenager story. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then, you know, the zombie apocalypse hits <laughs> and it's it, everything just goes crazy. So I, I wouldn't say it, it's a fun movie. It's great. It's a great soundtrack. Uh-huh. I don't think it lives up to like Zombie Land or Shaun of the Dead. That's hard, though. Yeah. That's but if, really if you hard. want another kind of comedic zombie film, this is a good one. 
But like, I mean, do you say, I mean, like, it can't hold up to those, but, you know, maybe like, they're, it's like good company with those sort of movies. Like, if you yeah. like those oh, sort yeah, of things, yeah. you would like this as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you, I feel a lot of attempts to be um, Shaun of the Dead. Okay. Um, especially, I mean, since this is a musical and Edgar Wright is so good about musical timing. Yes, that's his, true. His stuff always feels musical inspired. Yeah, I feel like we've even had a debate before. Like, you could almost consider uh, Baby, Baby Driver. Driver. It, it is. It's a music video. Yeah. Or, yeah, I would say a musical almost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's a really fun movie. I highly oh, nice. recommend it. Yeah, I, that's one I do want to try and go see. Uh, and then the bad movie that I want to recommend, which is not, you know, I, I'm a defender of bad things, but I'm going to stand by this one not being the worst movie ever. I went to go see Robin Hood this morning. Jesus Christ. I know, I know, I know. It's not reviewing well, but... It's a it's it's a Batman movie. It's a straight up yeah. Batman movie. No, I mean that's that's what it looks like. You watch the trailer, like, oh, this is Batman Begins, but for Robin Hood. Yes. Which is crazy because one could almost argue that's what Ridley Scott was kind of trying to do with his Robin Hood movie. Yeah. From a while ago, wasn't it even called like Robin Hood? No, whatever. Uh, Robin Hood Begins. Yeah, it was like an origin story of sorts, right? Uh, well, no, this one. This one's straight up an origin story. It is, but it was it was called something else before it was called Robin Hood. I feel like it was called Robin Hood Origins. I think it. I think, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, hey. But no, it, it's actually because uh, I don't know a lot about the original Robin Hood story. Mm-hmm. Um, we we briefly talked about it before the podcast. Uh, this this version takes place in the heart of the Crusade era. Yeah, you mentioned that, and I, I was in the impression that Robin Hood usually takes place after the Crusades. Like the whole point is he comes back from the Crusades. Yes, but I guess I mean I guess he it's technically still during it though I suppose because he comes back, but um, King Richard is still fighting. Okay, so I, I get okay, yeah, so I guess yeah, it's still yeah. Whole so, so there's no Prince John in this story. What? Um, yeah, the, it's only the Sheriff of Nottingham is the only villain, uh, played by the wonderful Ben Mendelsohn. Oh, I mean, good old Mendo. Um, so. And so the the money is which kind of makes it a bit of a gray area is the money he's taking from the poor is to fund the crusade. Okay. Um, and so, you know, so Robin hood, uh, j- j- just in the first five minutes, I'll, I'll go into that. Deep. Yeah. Um, Robin hood is sent off to fight the crusades. Um, does not like how they're treating their prisoners, tries to help, keep one of them alive fails and his commanding officer shoots him with an arrow in the stomach and says, since you're a Lord, I can't send you off for treason. We'll just, you know, dishonor you with having to leave your post early and send you back home to the doctors. That seems like an unnecessary amount of exposition right at the front of that movie. Yep. (laughs) God damn it. Um, but uh, no, I I think it's it's a like if it's a good turn your brain off movie. Did you have fun with it? I did have fun with it. I did. Okay, so uh, Kanye or not Kanye West, Jesus Christ, Jamie Fox. Jamie Fox is great. Like he's he's so fun in the movie. Okay, how like the only thing that gave me any sort of glimmer of hope, and I will not be seeing this movie, That's was it. Taron Edgerton, who is in anything else I've seen him in, incredibly charming. Yes. Is he that in this as well? Um, yes, but it's it's an interesting kind of charm because okay. he's trying to get in favor of the villains. Okay, so, and is so he, his is he, charm is yeah. Is he putting on airs and is the is the whole movie basically like that scene in Batman Begins when he's at the hotel and buys it? Uh pretty much. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's what it seemed like. Yeah, I I'm I'm gonna say Taron I'm I'm gonna like when we make when we make our list of best Batman, I'm gonna I'm gonna add uh Taron Edgerton to oh, the list. I, yeah, I no, I think he would be really good. Yeah. Um I think he'd also be really fucking good Nightwing. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and yeah, especially what we saw here. Yeah, like he he's good looking, he's charming, fit as fuck. Mm-hmm. I'm on board. Yeah. Um I think there's even a scene in the trailer of Robin Hood where he doesn't even like make a comment of like, oh like who would ever dress up like some guy in a hood and go out and like it, it was basically mirroring that exact same comment that Bruce makes, but like, oh, guy dressed a bat clearly has issues. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It, it's the same thing. It's it's very hand and foot in uh-huh. a lot of it. 
Yeah. Uh, well, I'm glad someone went to go see it. Yeah. I'm glad you did that noble work for the rest uh, of us. I, I mean, obviously, I'd, I don't think it was written to be a, to have a sequel. Like they. No, so th- I've read one thing about this movie. Okay. Which is that they, I won't spoil what happens, but there is a character that is set up to be an antagonist yes, yeah, in a yeah, future yeah, yeah, yeah. movie. Um, and that we'll probably never see that happen. Yeah, because I, I mean, the character was very boring. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I've heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, the the core cast, the the ones we got in Disney's Robin Hood, they're pretty much all there, okay. and they're fun. Uh, it's like you get a Friar Tuck, mm-hmm. you get the the little John, little John Friar Tuck, Will Scarlet. Um, I guess Will Scarlet wasn't in um, the, the animated one. one. No, uh, of course, Maid Marian. Yep. Okay. Um, real quick though. Yeah, whoa, oh. Whoa. Oh. I was gonna say, what do you? What have you? Before been I do my plug, real quick question for you: uh, What's the best Robin Hood movie, the Disney animated version of Robin Hood Men in Tights? I haven't seen Robin Hood Men in Tights. <laughs> it's been in my queue <laughs> for a long time. I we we've you know had I a problem with Robin Hood recently. I can't do this to you. <laughs> It'd be very hypocritical of me. Considering I literally have a podcast that is about all the shit I haven't seen. Mm-hmm. I can't keep calling you out for this stuff. So I won't. I would just say it's a lovely movie. We'll sit down and watch it sometime. I, I've heard. I've heard it's great. I, I realize because I had a uh, we had a conversation a while ago on the podcast about why they can't tell a good Robin Hood or King Arthur story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I now realize every Robin Hood movie they talked about I have not seen. I mean, I've never seen the animated one. I've never seen the Kevin Costner one, which I've heard he's not good in it, but I've heard Alan Rickman is amazing. Isn't that isn't that what a lot of people say is the best one? Yeah, that's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah, Prince of Thieves. But even then, like Men in Tights is specifically making fun of that movie. It's like Kevin Costner can't do an English accent, so there's a line in Robin Hood, Men in Tights, where Carrie Elwes, aka um, the Dread Pirate Roberts from. Uh, Princess Bride. Mm-hmm. He says, and unlike other Robin Hoods, I can actually speak with an English yes, accent. Yes, I, I have seen that scene. Yeah. It's it's a f- f- fantastic movie. Yeah. Um, but uh, that is not my plug this week. Okay. Uh, my plug this week is actually The Christmas Chronicles, <gasps> the Netflix movie. Yay! I'm so excited to watch it. I I had. I'll probably watch it while I set up my tree tonight. It's you know, I had been listening to the Empire Magazine podcast, which is one of my all time favorites, and they were talking about this movie, and they. They said that it felt like this generation's answer to the Santa Claus with Tim Good. Allen, which I, I really love that movie. Me too. Um, and I I still watch it every once every few years, and it more or less holds up. But it was basically that idea of like, here's how we can explain why Santa is real to a bunch of kids, mm-hmm. and have it be like really kind of fun. And it, it, it honestly is like the the lead actors kind of like leave something to be desired. But the the little girl, she's great. Okay. Um, and then, unsurprisingly, Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell kills it. is so good in this movie. Oh, like, I'm so excited. Th- there are so many lines, so many like c- like quotes in this movie that on paper would be read terribly. And if <laughs> anyone else were delivering them, would be so incredibly cringeworthy. But he does all of them with this weird just confidence and <laughs> sincerity and charm and... He like when he's not on screen, his absence is noticeable. But like, like I said, the, the little girl does her a good job carrying things that the 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 male actor can't necessarily. Okay. Um, I honestly I'd recommend it. It's really fun. I came up the night I just needed to watch something like light and entertaining. Yeah, I put it on. Yeah, something to turn your brain. Off. Um, I was pleasantly surprised by it. I quite yeah, enjoyed I'm it. So excited. I really quite enjoyed it actually. So I, I do I do recommend it. It's a it's a it's a fun movie, and I, I think it's worth inclusion up there. And some of those are just like holiday classics that are always sit, worth sitting down and watching. So, um, I can't wait. Yeah, no, because that's my plug. It's my plug this week. So go check that one out. Nice. Um, but I think that does it. We I did think, it. I think we're good. Yeah, oh gosh, we, did, we it. did it. We did it once again. Somehow, our hundred and third time at this, we did it. Um, Every time feels like an, an accomplishment. <laughs> I know. But if you uh, you do want to reach out to us, you got some questions, some recommendations for stuff for us to watch or anything like that, uh, we are at. If you want to argue po- Disney princesses with me? I am always happy to fight that fight. Absolutely, yes. Uh, yeah, you can do that on Cameron's. Don't <laughs> don't spam my accounts with this nonsense. Uh, but yeah, the podcast is at Tim Talk Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Gmail. Uh, I am at Lordifer on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, if you want to see my art, you can find it at. 
uh, Cameron.Dexter. If you want to see my face, you can find it at CamDexter underscore adventures. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We did well, it. Well done. Uh, we're back. Yeah, we got some stuff happening next week. Yeah. And we're we'll we're probably gonna have to do more bonus episodes around the holidays here. We just gotta figure out what those are gonna yeah, be. Yeah, because we're bouncing around. Soon. Yeah, yeah. There, there is one thing that people have been asking us a little bit here and there. That we might finally start. Just a little ambiguous tease there, but we might start venturing down that path. Ooh, yeah. we do with that cliffhanger just yeah. like Titans. <laughs> one but of us is an alien. Come back find in two out next weeks week. to get the answer. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>